China makes contact with the aliens. The Biden administration is failing on China, and Xi Jinping issues new orders to the military. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to John Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Be sure to like and leave a comment. It really helps us with the algorithm. And make sure you're subscribed because YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people. And since YouTube also hasn't been notifying people of new episodes, check back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday for new episodes. So today we're apparently calling occupants of interplanetary craft. China says it may have detected signals from alien civilizations. Amazing. I wonder what story they're trying to bury by talking about aliens. Social unrest because of COVID lockdowns? Political infighting at the highest levels of the Communist Party? This picture of Xi Jinping with a mustache? The artist who made this picture was arrested, so she must not be a fan. It'd be terrible if everyone saw this pic of him with a mustache instead of getting duped by this alien story. China says its giant Sky Eye satellite, the largest radio satellite in the world, may have found several cases of possible technological traces and extraterrestrial civilizations from outside the Earth. That's according to the Science and Technology Daily, the official newspaper of the Ministry of Science and Technology, which for some reason deleted the story after it went viral on the Chinese internet. What are they trying to hide? All oh, right. Gee, I wonder why aliens don't want to make contact with us. But according to cosmologist Zhang Tongjie, once dubbed China's top alien hunter, the possibility that the suspicious signal is some kind of radio interference is also very high, and it needs to be further confirmed and ruled out. This may be a long process. If there really were aliens, I'm sure she would try broadcasting signals to them, like music, poetry, or art. Not that art. And if you've ever read The Three-Body Problem, you know you really don't want China to be the ones to make contact with the aliens. They may have the time for this long process, though, because the Biden administration is totally blowing it on China. More after the break. Welcome back. If you like the show and want to help us expose the Chinese Communist Party, join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode on Patreon. You can also set a monthly limit, or you can join our exclusive censorship-free social media platform on Locals. The Chinese Communist Party is engaged in genocide and becoming increasingly hostile to the United States. But we wouldn't change them for the world. That's literally the Biden administration's China policy. After a year and a half, the Biden administration finally unveiled its China policy. Kind of a long wait for something so important. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken had this to say. We are not looking for conflict or a new Cold War. To the contrary, we're determined to avoid both. We don't seek to block China from its role as a major power, nor to stop China, or any other country for that matter, from growing their economy or advancing the interests of their people. Yes, why would we want to block China from its stated goal of spreading international communism and undermining the U.S.? And on top of that, the Biden administration waited a year and a half just to announce they weren't going to challenge China. This is like saying, you'll take care of the termites in your house, then 18 months later saying, we've decided we don't want conflict with the termites. And now, all the U.S. corporate interests that have been desperate to get back to doing business with China are coming out in full force. Bloomberg News, owned by billionaire Michael Bloomberg, says we need to engage with China. The Washington Post, owned by billionaire Jeff Bezos, says it's time to lift Trump's China tariffs. The New York Times, owned by Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim, says China doesn't have to be our next great enemy. And now the White House says it's discussing irresponsible tariffs imposed by Trump. Yes, those tariffs are harming the interests of the American worker. 
The American worker who has been complaining for decades about jobs being shipped to China while they steal American intellectual property and run us out of business. Because without tariffs, China had been dumping cheap goods on America. According to Insider, speaking to Axios, with inflation at a 40-year high of 8.6%, Biden and his top officials are desperate to show action on bringing down prices, even if it makes them appear weak on China. But you know who doesn't like that idea? All the labor unions. But there are definitely warning signs the Biden administration is going soft on China. The U.S. ambassador to China has been on a tweeting campaign talking about how great China is. The Forbidden City is such a cultural, architectural, and historical jewel. The CCP has done such a great job preserving this extraordinary site. Of course, the CCP has done a less than extraordinary job preserving the memory of all the students they massacred there in 1989. Chinese history books have more holes in them than the walls of Mr. I don't want conflict with termites. The ambassador also tweeted about how impressive China's high-speed rails are on his way to Wuhan. Yes, nothing like riding in the comfort of stolen technology on the way to where the Chinese regime covered up the coronavirus pandemic. The only thing missing is a nice refreshing glass of Uyghur Muslim tears to wash away a, the bitter aftertaste of swallowing your pride. Coming up after the break, Xi Jinping tells the Chinese military to prepare for not war. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party is conducting the largest military buildup the world has seen in decades. And Chinese leader Xi Jinping is telling them to be prepared to move for world peace. It was announced with this rather banal headline, Xi signs order to promulgate outlines on military operations other than war. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? I can't tell if he's giving orders or trying to win in Scrabble. So what non-war operations will the CCP's military be getting up to? Why world peace? The CCP's military will also safeguard national sovereignty, security and development interests, and regional stability. Now, China having orders on non-military activities isn't new by itself, but the timing of this is interesting. It's almost like as the Chinese military moves to protect world peace and national sovereignty, it's going to be gearing up to take control of the entire South China Sea, which China claims belongs to it and Taiwan, which China also claims belongs to it. Totally national sovereignty. As Chinese state-run media says, this will serve as a legal basis for military operations other than war. In other words, China is preparing for war, but also preparing to say that it's not war. It's not a military invasion of the independent democracy of Taiwan. It's just safeguarding national sovereignty. Totally different, and most importantly, doesn't violate any international laws or norms. Or in other words, the world will know peace as soon as we take everything by force and nobody ruins it by fighting back. And if you try to defend yourself, you are the one ruining world peace. A massive protest was planned for this coming Monday in China. Billions of dollars are on the line in what's being called one of China's largest financial scandals. A private investment firm colluded with bank employees to illicitly attract public funds via online platforms. And now the banks, located in Hunan province, aren't letting people access their savings. A huge protest happened back in May, and the Communist Party took action. This time, ahead of Monday's protest, they turned everyone's COVID health codes to red. Anyone with a red code immediately becomes person non grata. They are banned from all public venues and transport, and are often subject to weeks of government quarantine. And you can't have a mass protest if you're stuck in quarantine. Now, I've spoken a lot about Hong Kong over the years. We visited the city several times during mass protests. But apparently, I got something wrong. Many people are under the mistaken notion that Hong Kong used to be a British colony. Turns out that's not true according to brand new state-approved textbooks in Hong Kong. They've been rewritten to say Hong Kong was never a British colony. Move over Lord of the Rings, my new favorite fantasy novels are Chinese history books. Chinese Communist Party rewriting history like it's 1984. 
It's part of a broader push in Hong Kong to remove books that, quote, endanger national security. I'm no historian, but if truth endangers your nation, you've got yourself a pretty unstable nation. Truly, young people are the future. Which is why, besides changing textbooks in Hong Kong, the Communist Party has started installing police officers as vice principals across China. One of their duties will be handing out punishment for students who seriously misbehave. Oh, come on. The Communist Party already knows how to hand out punishments to students who misbehave. This went into effect at the beginning of May. I can't wait to see the results. And good news! Lockdowns are ending in China. The Shanghai lockdowns are officially over, except for all the millions of people still in lockdown. Turns out their lockdowns are like their wars. No, 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 this isn't a lockdown. We're just requiring you to stay in your home so we don't have to lock you down. And Beijing residents partied after dodging their COVID lockdown, which caused an outbreak prompting new lockdowns. Mass testings of millions in Beijing is now underway. By some estimates, China will have conducted almost 11 billion COVID tests between April and the end of June. All for the low, low cost of just $26 billion. When the debt bubble bursts, it will be huge. Hopefully, whenever the economy recovers, they'll be able to throw a massive party in Beijing. Just not so massive it puts them right back into debt. Now, I know I've covered a lot of pretty heavy, serious topics, but I wouldn't want you to think the world is full of gloom and doom and that there can be no international cooperation. That's just not true. Russia and China are building bridges, literally and figuratively. I'm glad at least the authoritarian countries can stick together. Hopefully this union will be as strong as the rest of China's bridges. And now, as a thank you to the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, I'll answer one of their questions. Today's question comes from Isolated Thinker on Locals. What are the five best Taiwan 7-Eleven goodies? Ah, now that question brings me back to the last time I was in Taiwan. 7-Elevens there are magical. Truly, a bonanza of treats, not like the ones in the U.S. So what are my top five favorite goodies? How about 12? Shelly and I actually did a review together of 12 things we bought at a Taipei 7-Eleven. The watermelon milk was to die for. I'll put a link to that episode below. It's one of our lowest performing episodes. Thanks for your question and your support, Isolated Drinker. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, the links are below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.